Hello, hello, hello. This is Rev. Minister Willie Ralston Jr. on this morning. On this Tuesday morning, around about 9.51 a.m. On this Tuesday morning, June the 8th, 2021. And I come to bring you the word on this morning. I come to bring you the word again on this morning. And read it from the Holy Bible, King James Version, please. 1 Corinthians, starting at chapter 6. In the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in the New Testament, and it's starting at verse 9, verse 9, and it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Neither one of these people who have not repented from these sins and that are still doing them to this day or until they leave this world and have not repented and have not received our Lord and Savior, for their Lord and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, they have not received him, the Son of God, for their Lord and Savior. And they are still doing these things that I just read that Paul mentioned here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's right here in the Bible. This is Bible. Okay, verse 11, and it says, And such were some of you, were some of you. You're not still this no more. When you've been born again, you're not these things that it mentions anymore. When you are born again, you don't do these things anymore. You don't have to worry about you uh, not going to go to heaven. Because as long as you repent from these things, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You will be going to heaven when you have repented from these uh, sins I just mentioned. And you have received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, for your Lord and Savior. And you have repented of your sin. You will go to heaven, but you will not go to heaven with these titles of sins. In your life, and you're still doing them. Okay, verse eleven again. It says, and it says, and such were some of you, were some of you. Okay, and it said, but ye are washed. Since you turn to Jesus, Jesus washed away your sins. We turn to Jesus, He washed away our sins. We are no longer these sinners by these titles. Hello, and but ye are sanctified. I mean, you set apart. Sanctified means you are set apart. You don't do like the world do these same sins no more. You don't do what these world of people do anymore. And the Bible said, come out from among them and be ye shepherds, said the Lord. You don't, you don't have no uh, fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You don't hang with these kind of people no more as your so-called buddies and friends no more. Come on, y'all. You're not in the streets hanging with these kind of people that uh, do these kind of sins, that have fellowship with darkness with these kind of sins no more. Hello, y'all. It says, such were some of you, were some of you, but you're not this no more. It said, but you're washed, but you're sanctified. You're set aside from the world like the true sanctified church, you know, is or was a long time ago. You know, that's why they were called the sanctified church. Because the sanctified church didn't do what all the other churches did. They didn't go watching those sports arenas and sports programs and Sports shows, you know, football, basketball. They didn't do all that. They didn't do all that drinking wine. and They didn't do all that drinking beer either. They didn't do that. The real saints, they don't do that now. Shit, real saints don't do that now. They didn't do all that smoking cigarettes. and you know, They didn't do all that then. They're not doing it now. The church is still the same. God have not changed. And his rules and his commandments and the word of God have not changed for the new uh, day and time, as y'all may put it. The word of God remain the same. Ain't no new way for the gospel. Ain't no new way for to, to live. Ain't no new way or nothing. The word of God is the same. The Bible said God said I'm the Lord and I change not. So God not going to change for no new day and time in 2021 and on in the future. God not going to change from the past and now into the future. God word remain the same. This is the same gospel that, that won young folks a long time ago. It's going to take the same gospel to win young folks now. There's no good excuse to take on this modern day and time, what y'all call modern day and time, this modern preaching and this modern so-called living and do what you want to do when the thing goes and, 
and y'all don't want to believe that holiness is right, but holiness is still right in the past, present, and future. Until the end of the world, holiness is still going to be right. Being sanctified is still going to be right. That's another word for sanctifying. Holiness. Holy. Come on, y'all. Set aside. You don't do like the worldly folks do. And while the holiness church, the real holiness church, I don't want to see it no more like I used to see. I don't want to see it no more like they say. It's a lot of names called holy, but they ain't really holy. They do like all the other churches do that don't even be called holy. So I say I don't really see that many holiness churches like I used to see, or like they talked about that they, they existed and on and on. Okay, holiness is sanctification. Sanctification is holiness. You don't do like the world. You different. That's right. God's people are different. We are different. That's why we get stirred at. We get washed and. People do things maybe to provoke us to anger or try to provoke us to anger and they want our attention. They want us to see them. They, they want to look at us and where we go because we don't watch and play sports. Real saints, we don't have nothing to do with your watching, playing sports, your football, and we don't drink and smoke no liquor drugs with you with that beer and whiskey and fermented wine. Liquor drugs, hello. That's what that is. Nigga to buy, nigga to sell. That's why this country going to hell. I still say it. Hello. So we are different. That's why we get stirred at the real saints. We get stirred at but all of y'all who do what the world do. They're not stirring at you as much. They're not stalking you to your job like they do me. <laughs> they're not following you to your house and waiting on you like they do me. You know, because you just like the world. You watching football with them. Uh, you playing basketball with them. You watch all that with them and you do like them. All these other kind of ball playing you do with them. So the world is not... Thing you a big deal enough to be watching because you're doing like they do. Okay. When the devil got you, why, why should he be out to you as much? Why should he persecute you as much? Come on, y'all. And a lot of church folk doing just like the world. So that's why y'all don't get persecuted. But the Bible said all that live godly in Christ Jesus has suffered persecution. And living godly is being sanctified and being holy. Come on. You don't do like the world. Sanctified means you set apart and you are different. And the word of God said in the Bible, it's right there in the Bible, it still says, the God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. And he said, sell a difference between holy and the world. He said, sell a difference between clean and unclean. He said, sell a difference between holy and unholy. And a lot of y'all are not doing that. And a lot of y'all claim you got the Holy Ghost or you got the Holy Spirit and, and everything else you can say. But it's not for me to judge, but the word of God is judging. Come on, the word of God judge you. I say what the word of God just said. I say what it said. I'm just saying what the word of God says. So God judging you. The Bible judge you. While you trying to judge a preacher, the Bible judging you. Hello. Okay, going back to the first Corinthians chapter six. Okay, going to verse 11 again. And it says, and such were some of you. You're not there no more. But ye are, ye are washed by the blood of Jesus. But ye are sanctified by the word of God and the blood of Jesus. But ye are justified. Jesus died on the cross. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, suffered and died on the cross to set us free from the sins of this world. He suffered and died on the cross to deliver from all sins, secret sins, open sins, all kind of sins, known and unknown sins. If it's a such thing as sin not being unknown to us, a lot of times people know when they do you wrong. They know when they're doing wrong against God and against themselves and others. So it ain't that many sins that, that's unknown. And then you, you know, I hear gospel sayings, other people talking about, Lord, forgive us of sins that we've done, that we know we've done, and the ones we don't know we've done. But it ain't that many sins that we do that we don't know we've done. Just to be honest about it. Come on, y'all. But come on, the Bible said, He came, Jesus, the Son of God, suffered and died on the cross. It says right here. To wash away our sin, to justify. He died on the cross for our sins. And the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, rose again from the dead to justify us. That means give us salvation. That's what justification means. Salvation from our sins. You know, appease God's anger toward us. That God did not anger us no more because of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible said God is angry at the wicked every day. Talking about those who reject God's Son. Don't want to be saved, you say. You don't want to be saved. You don't want to receive God's Son for your Lord and Savior. You refuse to be saved. You reject God's Son for being your Lord and Savior. So God is angry at you every day. Yes, He is. He loved you. He loved you. He take care of you. God said He reigns on the just 
and the unjust. He blessed those that are saved and those not saved. He sees you. That's God bless you with your prosperity. That's God bless you with food to eat and a shelter over your head. And they're really blessed. You can breathe. You can walk. You still alive. That's God bless him whether you saved or not saved. But he still loved you. That's right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if you will believe in him, you will not perish but have everlasting life. And that life is in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for salvation. Come on, y'all. That, that he suffered and died on the cross. That he died on the cross for your sins. And that he rose again from the dead to save all men, women, boys, and girls from their sins. Amen. Call his name Jesus and people born. The angel said, you shall name your child Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins and all people from their sins when they turned to him. But salvation came to the Jews first and to us Gentiles and it's all over the world. He come for everybody now. Come on, y'all. And Jesus said this. And the Bible said this. He was justified. He justified us. He said, but ye are justified in the name of of the Lord Jesus. And there's salvation in no other name. There's no salvation in Buddha. It's not in no Quran. It's, it's not in your Allah. <laughs> Come on. There's salvation in no other name. Except in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's salvation in no other name. The Bible says. There's salvation only in the name of Jesus. The Son of God. There's salvation only in the name. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of God. There's salvation in no other name. Under heaven. You hear me? That's the word of God. Because he's the one that came to pay the price for our sin. And by the spirit of our God, the Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost to draw you. You hear me? The Holy Ghost will draw you. And when you draw by the Holy Ghost, don't reject him. When you are drawn by the Holy Ghost, receive his drawing and come to Jesus as you are. That's what I did. I came to Jesus as I was. Weary, wounded, sad. And I found in him a resting place. And he made me glad. Let that old gospel song. You hear me? Okay, we're going back to verse. Verse, going back to verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 6. Let's start there. And you know, and we know, people go through such bad experience in this world. We People go through such bad experience that we heard of and some we never heard of and some that we would never hear of. The children are going through every day. All the people. These beautiful children, these in the schools and everywhere going through some bad experience that we may never know of and some we do know of all through the history of this country and the world. And other people, they do the thing they do for a reason. People live the kind of life they're living for a reason because Satan has brought evil one way or the other to every one of our lives. You hear me? The Bible says we all born in sin. And shaped in iniquity because of Adam and Eve, because of Adam's sin. You hear me? And the devil came to bring destruction and evil on everybody in this world. He wants us to hate each other. He wants us to talk about each other every day. As all human beings do every day on the news and everywhere you go, humans are talking about other human imperfections. And ain't nobody perfect but God. That's right. Even though he said, be ye perfect, for I am perfect. He means grow in grace, grow in grace, grow in grace, grow in his son, Jesus Christ, to perfection. But even Apostle Paul said, daily, I die daily. How come we die daily, Apostle Paul, as the word of God was speaking through Apostle Paul in the Bible? He said, we die daily because we are dying to this flesh and we are being perfect day by day, becoming perfect, that is. And we're not going to be completely perfect till we go to heaven and have our glorified bodies because as long as we're in this flesh, Apostle Paul said that too. He said, my flesh is no good thing. And we all in this flesh every day and night, which is no good thing. And we got to struggle and wrestle in this flesh, we are in a warfare every day and night of our lives. Those of us that are children of God and that are saints and born again in Christ, we are in a warfare because we are in this flesh, which is in no good thing. It's no good thing in the flesh, Pastor Paul said. We are in this flesh, sinful flesh in this world, and we die daily to perfection. Come on. To perfection. And we're not going to be completely perfect like God Almighty. Until we die in this world out of this un, out of this body that is corruptible. And we and then we'll get the incorruptible body, like the body of Christ. Come on, y'all. 
a glorified body, Jesus said we will have, where there is no sin and no imperfection. We'll be perfect then. Hello, let's be real about it now. But God understands why people do what they do. God is an understanding God. He's an all-wise God. He knows why people do what they do. People have been through such bad experience as children. Children go through such trauma and bad experience, and when they grow up, they become like the world want to call them uh, criminals, uh, defunctional families, and all kinds of names are being called about families that are not perfect families and families that are bad families. Everybody don't grow up with a perfect family. Everybody don't grow up with a wonderful mom and a wonderful daddy. Not everybody. Everybody don't have wonderful children. Come on, y'all. Everybody don't have wonderful in-laws. People do things they do because the children, as a child, a lot of them have grown up being jumped on and bullied and, come on, by other children, made fun of. Children are so cruel in these schools. Children are so cruel in neighborhoods and different places. Cruel, cruel children. Just as cruel as a lot of grown-ups are so cruel toward each other. A lot of children are cruel toward each other. Jump on each other. Beat up each other. And people think that's the only way you're going to solve problems is jumping on somebody. Abusing somebody. This world is so full of abuse. As all I of them think about it. I just got to admit, I got to tell the truth. God like truth and God like honesty. As all people love to magnify is jumping on somebody. Being abused. Children being abused to other children. Who can beat up who and who can whoop who. Humans jumping on each other and killing each other is all like Satan wanted to be. The devil love that. He loved people being abusive and want to brag about who can beat up another human being. That's all you think about in these movies. Most of these movies is killing and beating up. That's all people think about. You know that? But I'm so glad it's not like that. I'm so glad God loved everybody. He showed me. He loved those y'all don't love. He loved former leaders y'all don't love. God loved people that other people don't love. You know that? Jesus really do love everybody, including those y'all don't love. Hello? And it's all people think about solving problems by abuse. That is not you really solving no problem. And then both get key on it. You got to grow up. You got to learn how to fight in a world like this to defend yourself. You got to have guns to defend yourself. In this evil, violent world that is falling. This world is falling. It's falling in the church and everywhere. That's all people think about. Want to abuse another human being. And that is not God. That is Satan to the teeth. Want us to fight each other, beat each other up, and then brag about it. You want to harass somebody else, torment somebody else. You are a child of the devil. You are a child of the devil. All races of you that magnify somebody getting beat up and jumped on. You are a child of the devil that's glad about somebody getting killed. You are a child of the devil because that is not God. That is not Jesus in you. When you glad about somebody got jumped on or beat up or killed, you ain't nothing but a child of the devil. All race and color skin of you in the church house and out. You is not no child of God. Cause that don't solve. No problem abusing another human being. And like people do every day, humans talking about other humans' faults and failures on the news and everywhere. Always talking about each other. And Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged. Condemn not, lest you be condemned. Get the beam out your own eye, for you try to take the moat out of your brother's eye. And go for sisters too. Come on. Now y'all got faults and sins in your own life, but you love to magnify somebody else's sins and faults. Come on, celebrities or somebody you don't like in the neighborhood and your family or wherever. When you got faults in your own life, and that's every day and night, y'all. I've noticed this for years. All people do is talk about other people. Im imperfect humans talk about other imperfect humans every day and night all over the world on the news radio everywhere and when Jesus is the answer to everything nobody else is like your drugs and cigarette smoking and beer and wine that's not the answer to your problem you drunk, get drunk and have your beer parties your drug parties I call them too <laughs> cause that's liquid drugs y'all drinking and buying and selling and that is not the answer to the problem God keep telling you what the answer is. Y'all go through trauma as children. I know a lot of people are the way they are because of what they experience in their lifetime. Because what people have been through with and other people have put them through with and other children have put them with in their lifetime. You are a homosexual because somebody molested you when you was a child or through the years or when you was in prison or jail, whatever age. 
You are homosexual. God understand that. God know that. And you are lesbian for a certain reason. Because how you went through as a child, a girl, as a child in, in a jail or prison, and that devil put you through in them kind of places. And it's just like HLN on earth and I'm jail in prison. God understand that. God know that. And he still tell you to turn to him, come to him. Because just not the answer. Wrong kind of friends that want you not to be saved. They're not the answer. They don't want you to be saved. They want you to die and go to hell with them. Those are wrong kind of friends. You don't need to be talking to them about your problem. You need to tell Jesus about it. Tell God about all your problems. That old gospel son. I must tell Jesus all my problems. I must tell Jesus that that old gospel son. You hear me? Wrong kind of friends not to answer. Wrong kind of kinfolk friend or family friend not to answer either. Jesus is the answer. If you have to stand alone by yourself, stand alone by yourself. You hear me? Wrong company, bad company. Come on, bad company, bad friends. Make a good child go astray. You hear me? Old on young, make you go astray with the wrong kind of friend. You don't need them kind of friends that don't want to live right. You don't need them kind of friend that cussing and lying or don't want Jesus like you want Jesus. When you turn to Jesus and want Jesus, you don't need no friend that don't want Jesus. You need them, leave them so-called friends alone, don't want Jesus like you do. That's the word, come out. The Bible said, come out, come out from among them that don't want to be saved. Come out from among them smoking and drinking and don't want to live right and don't want you to live right. Cause how can they want you to live right and they don't want to live right? Hello? If they don't want Jesus, how can they really want you to want Jesus? You know they lying, they faking. We need to be with those who truly want Jesus like we do. We don't need no friends that don't want Jesus. We don't need your friendship. I don't want your friendship. All of God's children don't want your worldly friendship. The true children of God don't. Hello. God said, come out from among them. Then touch not the unclean things, and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord God Almighty. Hello. And God understand why y'all turn into homos. God understand why y'all turn into lesbians or bisexuals. God understand why you turn into a criminal period. God know why you so hard hearted in jail and prison, why you went to jail and prison in your younger days, and you still in jail and prison, or got there after you got older and growing up. God knows the reason why people do what they do. God knows why people change the way they change. When nobody else understands, God understands. When nobody else understands you, you people need to know that God understands you. You hear me? And you need to know God will forgive you if the judge in the courthouse don't forgive you. If those on jury duty don't forgive you. If the police of all kind, FBI don't forgive you. God will forgive you. He understand why you do what you do. He know why you change for the worse and not for the better. He know why you got bad and hard hearted and, and mean and turned into a criminal and became, became abusive. God know why. He know you got abused. He know you got molested. He know you got raped as a boy or girl. He know why. Even when you got grown, went to jail and prison, got raped, and became a homosexual or transsexual, tranny or whatever. He know how your mind got destroyed because of your bad experiences. God know the bad experience of every human being on this earth. He know he saw what happened to you when nobody else saw it. When you felt like nobody saw what happened to you as a child, God did. When nobody else, a school teacher, know about it, God saw what whoever it was in your family, out of your family, or wherever, in the alley, somewhere, or wherever, this happened to you. These bad spirits that caused trauma to your mind and destroyed your mind to cause you to become a criminal or become a homosexual, a lesbian, or whatever. God know why that made you a serial killer or a bomb planter. He know why. Nobody else know why but Jesus. And nobody may never, ever understand but God himself. There is a God. He do exist. The Bible said, the eyes of the law is in every place. Beholding the evil and the good. He see every bad experience a child going through right now. In their home or wherever they at. God know every bad experience every grown person going through it right now. No matter where they are. God sees everything. He sits on his throne. The Bible said the earth is his footstool. He sees everything, every human being going through of all race and color skin. He loves all race and color skin. God don't have no respect to person. He's not racist. He don't have no racist word in his mouth for nobody. Hello. He loves us all. 
people got this racism and racist words, but they can't stand when it's dished out to them. Especially as racist America, they don't, they don't want black folks to be racist toward whites and Mexicans, but Mexicans don't mind being racist. <laughs> Come on, toward black people. But no N words, other words. Come on, y'all. You can't stand nobody to dish out to your race, but you dish out to the black race. Now, I'm not talking about here in America and all over the world. But see, God not like that to a nobody. He love us all. Trying to tell you as God minister of the gospel on today, he loved all race and color skin, all children. He loved you precious children more than your mom and dad ever loved you. Your mom and dad might not even love you, some of y'all. But God do. He said he'll be a father to you. He'll be a mother to you. He'll be a sister and brother to you. The Bible said in the book of Son, let you know this. All friends or whatever you are, you can be an orphan, adopted, whatever you are. The Bible said, these scriptures right here, if my father and mother forsake me, then the law will take me up. That's the word. That means God will take the place of your mom and daddy if you don't have one. Or if they have forsaken you. Or if they give you up. Whatever it is. God won't give you up. God's love is everlasting. His love won't change. People change. Your so-called friends will change. Your buddies and homeboys and homegirls, they'll change. But God letting you know he won't change. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And when you turn to him and receive Jesus for your Lord and Savior, be born again, he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, even to the end of the world. And this world coming to an end, believe me. And even if we die, or you die, or we die, and before the world comes to an end, he said, I'll be with you. Even then, he said, I'll give you be my guide even unto death, the book of Psalms said. He'll be our guide even unto death. According to the Bible in the book of Psalms. So he'll guide us into death. He'll be with us even in death. You hear me? Come on. We may never see this world come to an end. But that's the end of our world. When we are called home to glory. When we die. That's the end of our world. You hear me? He said he'll be there with us even then. He said I'll never leave thee never forsake thee. Even to the end of the world. And when we go through these bad traumas. And bad experiences that cause us to be sick. Come on, people going through AIDS and cancer and they come by COVID-19 these past months since last year and, and on and on and on. Come on, so many people are dying of all kinds of diseases, not just COVID-19, even diseases they don't mention no more. Come on. AIDS, all kinds of diseases, folks dying, natural deaths and unnatural death and tragic deaths, deaths. Come on. But through it all, God will bring us. He said, you go through the waters, I'll be with you. You go through the water, he said, I'll be with you through those deep waters. The deep waters of life and bad experiences. Come on, y'all. Tribulations of all kind. People talk about you. People trying to kill you and those who do get killed. Come on, God suffered to be so. Come on, y'all. The true saints, our brothers and sisters in Christ, dying for Christ overseas. Getting killed like the saints of the old days in the Bible day. They're getting killed like that right now overseas in our modern day and time. The real saints still getting killed overseas like in the Bible day. But he's with them to the end. And God will let us live as long as he wants us to live. I'm going to live as long as God wants me to live to preach this gospel. You hear me? That he called me to preach. You hear me? As God's gospel minister, I'm going to live as long as God wants me to live. And go for all of God's church. You hear me? Plain and simple. He said, I'm the Lord thy like God that healeth thee. He's the healer. He's the healer, not so much the doctor. God is the healer of the mind, soul, and body. Hallelujah. God is the healer of the mind, soul, and body. You hear me? By his stripes, we are healed. And the Bible said the Lord is the preserver of life. The Bible said he's the one that keeps us safe. The Bible said these things. You hear me? He's, the Bible says safety is of the Lord. He's the one that keeps us safe. He's the one that spares our life. He's the one that got our life. And I saw in the palm of his hand, especially those of us that are his children. You hear me? Hallelujah. We are born in this world for a purpose. All color, skin, all races, all people are born in this world for the kingdom of God. And it's up to you to choose, up to us to choose whether or not we're going to serve God's kingdom or not. God give everybody the choice. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, he give us all the choice. He did not make us a robot. God is an all-wise God. He knows not to make us a robot. 
Because we won't really love him if he make us a robot. He wants to truly love him and choose to live for him and choose to work for his kingdom and choose to receive his son for our personal Lord and Savior so we can choose to love him. Hello, and we love him. He, he know we do it by our own choice and we truly love him. Hello, not like robots. So God give everybody a choice. So either you choose to go to heaven or you choose to go to hell. I'd have gone through all this hell on earth. As a child, a lot of y'all been through bad experiences. As a child, as a grown up, you're in prison, you're in jail, you're, you're on death row because the world ain't going to forgive you for a lot of things. But Jesus will. I'm here to tell you, as God's gospel minister, I'm here to tell you God will forgive you no matter what your crime is or what your crime was. Because you got to face the death penalty. That's man's law. But God's word and law tell you that he loves you. He will forgive you before you die. If you receive his son for your personal Lord and Savior, and you will go to heaven and leave this ugly world anyway. This world is falling in a way as why it had you fallen. Because you went through bad experiences. And the, and the devil talked to you. You listened to the devil. Or uh, the devil took you over before you received Christ. But Jesus is still the answer. The Lord Jesus Christ is still the answer. God's son, Christ Jesus, is still the answer. So you don't have to go to hell when you leave this hell on earth. Hello. For all eternity, you can go to heaven. For all eternity, after going through all this hell on earth. In the prison, in the pen, wherever you are. Penitentiary. Crazy house. So-called crazy house. And Lord, we just ask you to bless these people. The mental retarded children. The handicapped children, the, the autistic children, the autistic grown people, autistic teenagers, who they call men of retarded. Lord, save their soul, we pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus, save the souls of all those that are in prison on today. Those that are in the penitentiary today, Lord, we ask you to save their souls in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless them to receive you, Lord Jesus, on today for their person, Lord and Savior. Bless all those in jail. And in the penitentiary and those that are in the so-called crazy house, mental institution, mental hospital, mental wards and hospitals everywhere and all over the world, that they have a mind to turn to you, Jesus. That they be saved on the day we pray, God. In your name, Lord God. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. That they believe the gospel, Jesus, right now. As they hear me today, that they receive you, that you suffered and died on the cross for all their crimes to mankind, to you. That you suffered and died on the cross for all their sins, no matter what it is, incest, whatever it is, molestation, or those who've been molested, bless them to turn to you, Jesus, and that they would they receive you, Jesus, for their personal Lord and Savior, and that you died on the cross for their sin, that you rose again from the dead, and that you're coming back again, and they receive you, Jesus, for their personal Lord and Savior. I pray, we pray, in Jesus' name, as your minister of gospel, God, I pray for these people right now today, all races and colors, skins of them, God. That they be saved. This is the devil that won't force to have evil in their hearts to a former leaders or former who or toward me or whatever. That's evil. That's the devil. That's the sin nature. The sin nature wants us to hate. The sin nature wants you to hate. No matter who it is you hating, that's the devil and that sin nature of yours. And Jesus wants to deliver you from it all, whoever you are, whatever you are. And he's the only answer. Ain't no hate going to heaven. Ain't no hating former leaders like Trump or whoever, Biden, Fred President, President, whoever it is. Ain't no 